When you look at evolution fundamentally, it is simply an interactive process of combining additional or different components to comprise novelty. So basically, you continue to add things as new properties emerge. So it is merely the progression of communication over time then, as communication is essentially the interaction between two or more units. Whether or not the, the units are people, the cells that make up people, or the particles that make up the cells that make up people, and so on. It all boils down. So what I've done here is broken the time from the beginning of the universe till now into three portions. Now, I paid good money to have this drawn up actually, but uh, my artist lied on his application, I think, so apologies sincerely. But uh, for argument's sake, we'll start with the hydrogen atom, which is made up of a proton, neutron, and electron, represented by the three primary colors of painting that are expressed in the video at least, the ones that they've chose as the three primary colors. Now, a hydrogen atom in space can't do much by itself, but after gravity has done its thing, well, things happen. Once you add enough atoms into the mix, a star is energetic enough to fuse hydrogen into heavier elements that get thrusted outwards to mix with other elements to form and organic compounds and organic molecules that mix to form carbs, fatty acids, and especially proteins and DNA that all interactively unify to form the cell as the proteins and DNA condense into the center or the nucleus of the cell. Then the process cleans slate and starts over again but with new capabilities. Now cells can't evolve much without other cells to interact with, just as lone hydrogen atoms and space couldn't. But this is a new grade of evolution where cells can make copies of themselves. And just like if you add enough hydrogen atoms in, in, into the mix in space, you fuse heavier elements. If you keep adding cells, you produce higher functions. As certain cells become specialized, such as muscle and immunity cells, among others, but something else is happening as well. Pathways to bring these functions together are also being formed as all cells send signals back and forth using proteins and proteins grouped in innovative ways in some cells allowing the signals between cells to become stronger and stronger as these are the cells that would evolve into neurons. So you have your muscle or technology of the cell and the brain to use it being incorporated as the sponge can expand and contract as what is known as a calcium wave gets sent by the grouping proteins throughout the sponge allowing them to vaguely communicate to corresponding muscle cells enough to act in unison. The way I see it, it's the introduction of primitive thoughts manifesting or or at least the kind we could associate with is really the thoughts can be traced back further and further as we'll get into. But you think about opening your hand and you do as the sponge expands similarly when it when it needs to. And that, that may be just a bit oversimplified there but uh, now the stationary sponge evolved into the mobile jellyfish and the network of grouping, grouping proteins in the sponge evolved into the nerve net, which is basically a nervous system without a brain. You see, there is a signal being transmitted and received from the start of the universe that has grown more robust as the tools used to transmit and receive it are streamlined. Atoms send signals, or photons, or bundles of light back and forth as a quick example. So a quick recap from that perspective, you mix atoms to form heavier elements, to form organic molecules, to form proteins and DNA that group into a primitive neural network that evolved into the nerve net whose collective interactions were concentrated into a centralized process called cephalization where neural tissue consolidates the head of an organism creating the first brain. Now, I pulled out all of the C words on that one, there are none left. but. Hope uh, most of the technical jargon is out of the way, <laughs> and really all that fancy shit was just a way of saying it's all swirling inward, but exponentially, which we'll get a little more into as we go. And yes, there's a clear analogy being made comparing the internet with the nervous system that gets written off as anecdotal, I'm sure, by anyone that puts forth the notion. But the only thing I mean to, to present as a metaphor is pretty much the colors usage that are mainly used to help illustrate my points. 
but uh, back to the nervous system and the net comparing the two systems separate from the rest may not inspire much belief but stepping back and looking at the entire process it is clear to me at least that it is more than just a coincidental striking resemblance and now picking back up at the brain the process now starts over again as it did with the cell and proceeds with fresh advancements. An analogy for any of my gamers especially is after you beat a game and you go back through, you're doing so with not only more experience but also new abilities or levels are often unlocked, all allowing you to play the game in new manners. And this is what the universe is basically doing. It is gaining experience and using it as new windows of opportunity are continuously explored. And then the reset button gets hit, as brains do, as cells did, as atoms did. They come together to produce novelty, just more dynamically on each platform. Now the worm can replicate, as cells could, but also has the groundbreaking ability to see the world around it faintly for the first time, among other skills. Now, there would be many more paradigms involved here, but this is trimmed down as the process happens many more times in between the worm and the brain even and elsewhere as each one of our life cycles represents it actually this isn't near this isn't nearly as in depth as i like it's just made it's just easier to swallow hopefully but the worm brain would evolve into the human brain that is aware of itself which is a huge stepping stone within itself and in the process, families were formed that could defend themselves more effectively, and the families grew into, into tribes that could hunt and forage more efficiently, and also herd animals, as higher functions are simply arising out of the interaction between brains, as it did with the cells and the atoms. The tribes would grow into a civilization as agriculture, writing, and many other things emerged. Nowadays, you could compare labs for research, colleges, and or wherever novelty is emerging as the muscle cells, as in the sponge, or the evolving technology of the system, and the roads, radio, telephone, and internet as the evolving pathways reminiscent of what happened during the evolution of the grouping proteins from cell colony to sponge and to the brain of the system. Or the brains and the brawn, basically. As the database, Google, or something that will emerge from it seems to be the primitive version of what will be a fully interactive internet or meta brain now we see how the stationary sponge or the sponge was stationary as civilizations are basically and once the net becomes more interactively able we and or it and its components will be mobilized we, we will break from the ground as the sponge did you can think basically of a very dynamic internet running rampant in space or into some virtual landscape or across unknown dimensions or wherever it wants to go. God only knows. Rod only speculates and only to some extent. <laughs> but as the worm grew to becoming aware of itself, so will the internet and or the society that houses it. We will all actually work together, God forbid. And once this happens, we will clearly see how relative consciousness is as all of our individual minds aggregate into a collective or meta-consciousness. They say the universe is conscious. And if you look back at how the nerve net was a primitive version of the brain and how the grouping proteins in the sponge were a more primitive version of the nerve net and therefore then a more primitive brain still and continue to trace each predecessor back as each being a more primal version of the brain than the next, you can see that consciousness as we know it anyways, is the signal that has been growing in strength this whole time and is in everything. So yes, I'm saying that the atom is a very, very, very primitive version of the brain. And so then photons that get sent back and forth between atoms would be the thoughts of the brain. Funny, because all fiber optics are, is the transmission of photons back and forth to construct data, like Morse code, and or like thoughts. Just an interesting side note. Or is it? That's all mental images or thoughts are, are photons bouncing around in your head. So basically, literally like little light bulbs going off. Something to think about. So. Each one of these stages are like little big bangs. There are many more, as I've said, these are just the big, 
little big bangs. Now, all variation as we know it came from the Big Bang, as all biological variation as we know it came from the cell, and all creatures who are bilaterally symmetric and, and radially symmetric came from the worm. These are creatures who have two arms, two eyes, two ears, etc., and also a top to bottom. So, there appears to be a definite process unfolding that is growing towards something, and that goes completely against mainstream science that claims the genetic mutations are random and that evolution has no direction. The clear process is enough for me, at least, but when you consider that it is not only happening, but has been occurring exponentially, to me, it seems there shouldn't even be a debate. This expresses it here in little detail as it's been covered much more comprehensively. But roughly 14 billion years ago was the inception of the universe. Roughly 4 billion years ago was the advent of the cell. And 500 million years ago was the acquisition of the brain. It is basically an accelerating advancement of evolutionary milestones that is happening faster and faster. And we are at a level where it is happening not just from generation to generation, but major breakthroughs are happening every few decades, and it will continue to speed up. But it's not only speeding up, it's increasing in orders of magnitude. Now, who knows, maybe there isn't some sort of end goal that the universe has in mind, and it is just reality bent on folding in on itself infinitely, as this fractal represents, or it could be going in and out in some kind of cyclical manner, who knows, we can only speculate, you know, at some, at some point. But something outside of anything that science can explain or is willing to address is obviously happening. As another pattern that is mimicking characteristics of the Big Bang was that at the Big Bang, the, the four fundamental forces are said to have been unified as the universe banged into existence. So, uh, gravity, the strong, weak force, and electromagnetism were all uh, unified into one force that broke and had to. If it didn't, gravity would hold everything together. So, they had to break or nothing would happen, basically. But... Uh, this happens at each stage too, as you're seeing little big bangs. Um, the single eukaryotic cell is completely symmetric, uh, no up, down, right, left, and it slowly or it evolved into the sponge and jellyfish to where it had an up and down, and then into the worm to where it had a right and left, to where it was radially and um, bi bilaterally symmetric. And then the process uh, starts over again with the brain the brain um, broke into right and left hemispheres and it went into a bunch of lobes so up down right and left into a bunch of different lobes and so at each stage basically it's taking the model and shattering it into pieces and then all of the pieces coalesce into a solid unit and then that unit gets shattered and then all of those pieces swirl into a new more dynamic unit or level or platform than the one prior to it. But I don't want to sugarcoat it. Just because it appears as if everything is happening for a reason doesn't mean you'll live a fruitful life and doesn't grant you an afterlife automatically in the context it's used uh, in Christianity at least. And just because there appears to be a goal doesn't mean that we will be able to process it currently enough to get any fulfillment out of it. It's like apes not getting into, you know, shit that we get into, playing video games, etc. They're not smart enough. It doesn't mean you won't get all of those things. It doesn't mean you won't get them. It just means that we are a part of something bigger than ourselves. The answers, you know, they're probably all around us. We just have our blinders on and are currently unable to see, see it quite clearly. Doesn't mean we can't try, as I obviously can't stop trying. <laughs> but uh, we'll get it, as we, we can think of it as using photons or bundles of light or thoughts in new dynamic ways to perpetually illuminate the path before us. Granting us broader and more in-depth perspective, Grandmaster told me. But things may happen for a reason. Maybe just not always the reason we associate the event with. As we become entangled in, is it irony or destiny? Or just plain old luck? 
but that's just looking at a tiny portion of it. If you scale back far enough, destiny is just luck multiplied to some ridiculous power as at some point the amount of anomalies and coincidences anomalously coinciding as they do at least begs the question of whether or not there's something larger going on. You know, you didn't need my badass artwork here or my twerp bag voice to see that our story is obviously absolutely amazing if you look back, but that it has also been occurring exponentially from the bottom of simplicity through countless stages of adversity and appears to be on the cusp of culminating into something words can't quite even muster. It's more prolific than any movie, book, or tale ever told and we're all a part of it. So my friends, enjoy the trip on the coffee table and lick my bops, boss. You haters out there, man.